All right, we are on the air. Welcome to Inside the Soundwave Internet TV Show, live from the beaches of Indian Atlantic, Florida, right here on the beach, beautiful Florida. Musicians, this is where all the musicians get to tell their music story. From the beginning to the present, today's guest is the mo one of the most popular in Brevard County, one of the best musicians I've ever known here or anywhere. This is Mr. Kenny Cohen. Let's have a nice hand for Kenny Cohen. <laughs> what an honor to have you here today, Kenny. It's great to have you here. We are really thrilled. Uh, I know Paul was going to try to make it today, but we got some circumstances and he, he couldn't make it. Correct. So I'll get him on another time. I'll, have to, I'll get him here from L.A. or wherever. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Kenny. Kenny Cullen. Now, this is a man that's been in the music business for how many years? Uh, I started actually around 1960. All right. There you go. Six, so. 1960. That's good because my interview questions today were around that time for me, too, in the okay. 60s. So yeah. I, I kind of figured these questions will be, <laughs> these questions will work for you, too. So in the 1960s, Kenny, you're still in Brevard? You're in Cocoa Beach? or? Yes, I am. I, I've, I've always kept a residence here, and this has always been my home, and I'm glad to be here. You playing? Yes, as a matter of fact, um, we have several projects that are going on right now, and uh, most notably the ones that we were fortunate enough to put together actually in your studio a couple of months ago. Amen. Well, I, I know that was... Anytime you, you fellas are in here... Kenny Cohen, Kenny Clark, Austin Pettit, Paul Ill, Michael Wright. I'm in awe. These guys are tremendous. These are all really good musicians. Hopefully, I have Kenny on today. Maybe I can get around to Austin. Maybe I can get around to Paul and Michael Wright, and especially, uh, of course, Kenny, uh, Kenny Clark. But today I got one of the group, Kenny Cohen, and it's... It's so good when Kenny's here. I watched him play the last time he was here. I've seen him play out. Such a professional. In Brevard, we have so many uh, good musicians, and this is one of the class acts right here. Saxophone, vocals. <laughs> you got to hear this guy. If you haven't heard Kenny Clark, I mean, Kenny Cohen yet, if you haven't heard Kenny Cohen yet, you need to go out and, and see him because... Thanks, Will. It's it's a it's a great thrill this to watch him play, Kenny. Yep. So when did you start your your musical career? Actually, um, I grew up overseas. Uh, my father was in the military, and I spent the first fifteen years in central Germany. Actually, I was born in Munich, and then I lived in Heidelberg and Mannheim. And while I was there, um, it was when I first. Uh, started following my artistic passion, you know, which was the music thing, and I started playing woodwinds at an early age, uh, around uh, 11 or 12 years old, and at the same time I started playing guitar. And uh, I was fortunate to, ask, to be asked to go on a USO tour when I was in junior high school, and I toured throughout Europe with an all-star USO orchestra. That kind of got me interested in the performance end of things. And I always had an affinity for the music on all the different levels, and I had experienced quite a bit of it in Europe growing up. And then we moved to the States and landed right here in Satellite Beach in 1962. 1962? Yeah. I didn't know you were born in Germany. Yeah, I was born in Munich. Munich? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was, that's, yeah, I didn't know that about you. Yeah. Uh, for some reason or yeah. other, I thought you were born in, you know, like a lot of the guys in New York or... Yeah, no. You know? No, I was fortunate enough to spend all those early years there, and uh, actually, I, I, looking back in retrospect, I, I got such an, a great education just from yeah, yeah. being there, meeting so many different people, you know, getting interested in the arts and, you know, and, and the music situation on, on all the different levels, classical, you know, and of course, uh, at an early age, I had an affinity for the jazz stuff and, the, you know, the American rhythm and blues. You went to school, and so you did all your schooling in Germany? I did all my schooling until I came here, and I came here when I was starting the 10th grade, and Satellite High School was a brand new school in 1962, wow. and that was my introduction to the United States. And, mm. uh, wow. Yeah, so. 
by the same by the same time uh, when I came here, I got involved in two very interesting things that summer. First of all, I saw the Atlantic Ocean and I saw waves, and I went like, "Hmm, this is something. <laughs> this is something I could sink my heart into." And I I lived the best of both worlds. I I was in the beginning of the surfing industry here. In Brevard County, in the early days, there was maybe two dozen surfers here, and I got into that real quick. And at the same time, I met all the most accomplished musicians uh, in Brevard County. They were a little bit older than me, but they were already plugged into the playing situation here. And um, and right away, I started playing with them. And when I got into the tenth grade in school, we started our first band, The Dimensions, with some uh -huh. guys that became very became fam famous guys here. And uh, I did that for a couple of years, and then I transferred in my senior year to Cocoa Beach High School and uh, started from Cocoa Beach High School. I met four guys that were going to school there and we started a, a band called The Group. And uh, So you went well. from Satellite to, you, did you stay in Satellite or did you move up to Cocoa Beach? I moved, Beach? To, Coco, moved Coco, up to Cocoa Beach. From so. Satellite yeah, uh, yeah, Beach? Yeah. That was cool. And they had, and, and wow, I tell you, I've seen some pictures of the, uh, <laughs> the, air, the roads yeah, on the uh, on the internet, A one A and U S. I don't know what. Yeah, U S. One was there. Yeah, I, I'm just. I see the difference between the the uh, the roads and the beaches then, and now. Well, it was actually uh, you know now that you brought it up, uh, back in those days we could actually drive on the beach, and uh, I was talking to uh, Phil Salick last night at the pier. Uh, I was playing there with the Vibe, with Kenny Clark's band in Austin, and Bill Marsh, Jennifer. We played last night. Yeah, and. Uh, I was talking to Phil uh, about the fact that in 1964, the very first Easter Surf Fest, I played the first surfer stomp that was ever at the pier with my band, The Dimensions, and it was produced and put on by Jack Murphy, Jack Murphy, Surf Murphy. Wow. And we were talking about that last night, and there I was at the pier last night, and I'm going like, you know, some of the best things in life don't change. No. So I was very happy, yeah. No. I was happy to be there. Well, if you could have looked then ahead to this time, and, and, and you, you would have said, wow. I mean, you must have seen a lot uh, going on in, the, in Cocoa Beach. You did stay in Cocoa Beach area? I stayed in Cocoa Beach, and I, and I left periodically, but I always came back here. I mean, this place has an attraction, as you well know from all the people you know here as well, and, right. and, and you and your family and stuff. There's just something that attracts attracts certain people to this area that I've noticed, and I've met people from all over the world here. I've met people all over the world when I was traveling that knew about Cocoa Beach, you know? And uh, yes, I've seen this place evolve since the very beginning. I've seen all the changes. I've seen the metamorphosis of a place that was primarily designed with the space industry in mind, and people were very scientific-minded, and there was a lot of engineers, and a lot of the kids I grew up with, their fathers were engineers, and... Interestingly enough, most of the people I grew up with were very smart people and very talented. So, you you said sixty two, right? That's when See, I came I, to the states. Yeah, I you yeah, you came to Satellite Beach in sixty two yeah. then because uh -huh. I, as a uh, young teenager, not a, quite almost a teenager in sixty three, I came down with my parents because my sister came down to Daytona in sixty two. Yeah, from Massachusetts. And so, I, I mean, I was down here in 63, but in Daytona. Right. So, I mean, I saw Daytona back then when they were driving on the beach, and, and the NASCAR thing was really going pretty strong up there in, in the Daytona. Uh, so I, I see the difference between when I came down first in 63, and we kept coming down every year. Yeah, so, I mean, right. I have seen the, the changes. But, but you have seen uh, this area uh, uh, really probably grow quite a bit. It's grown in every possible way that I know of. And I, I was fortunate enough, when I started playing here, I, it was before anything was really developed. And uh, I tell a cute story about the time when uh, I really wasn't old enough to play in the clubs, but that was what was kind of going on before I started my little high school bands. And I actually had to have what they call an in, up north, a cabaret card, and I had to have it signed by the by the sheriff's department so that I could go in when I was 15 years old and hang out at these clubs. And the gentleman that owned most of the 
primary clubs in this area groomed me in this business. And uh, they were responsible for developing Cocoa Beach on a, on, a, on a really great level because a lot of important people came here for the space business. Right. And you see a missile go off or, oh, yeah. or whatever. And there was all kinds of celebrities in town all the time. A lot of activity These with guys the space. catered to them, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Big time. Kennedy and then on with the space program. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Do, can you remember any of the small nightclubs or clubs back then? In, any names back from the 60s that you might have hit with your band? Well, it, it all started, there was, in primarily in Cocoa Beach, there was Johnny's Hideaway, there was Nort's Vanguard Lounge, uh, there was uh, a, a place called the Missile Lounge, uh, and those were, the, those were kind of the primary places, and there was a couple places down in Melbourne uh, that people played at too. Some were like oriented for like teenagers, and not so much drinking, but uh, right, the, yeah, the, the mostly beach. on the beach side, or most only in mostly Melbourne. on the beach side. Right. You know, that's where all the activity was taking place. So. Was Melbourne uh, busier then, or than Melbourne was? Beach? Melbourne was one of the first places that I actually started playing uh, uh, when I was when I was young when I was a youngster and and uh, at tenth grade at Satellite High School. Uh, the old, uh, where the Sebastian Beach Inn is now, used to be the Coast Guard Station. And we used to play venues there, and then the, they used to have a thing called, like, the Teen Towns were popular. And there was, like, the Melbourne Teen Town, and O'Galley Teen Town, or S Teen Center. And there was a place called the Sugar Shack that was where, uh, right across from Melbourne High School, where Melbourne High School is. And they had all these pop bands that were touring, like, in the early 60s come down here. Matter of fact, a lot of acts on their way from New York, Stop on the coast, Jacksonville, Daytona, Cocoa Beach, uh, you know. Coming down through. Yeah, on the way to Miami. Miami. On the way to Miami. On right. the way to yeah. Miami. Yeah. What instrument did you pick up first? I picked up clarinet first. And, of course, at that time, rock and roll was going on, so, you know, I wanted bigger and better things. Wow. So, so you started with a clarinet. Started with clarinet. And then where'd you go after that? I went to saxophone and I went to guitar at the same time. Wow. You know. Back in the 60s. Back in the 60s, yeah. All right, we're ready for a short break already. You should, I tell you, every time we have to take one of these breaks, I'm going to, it was that quick? Okay, we're going to take a short break. We're going to hear from our sponsor. We're going to let you see a video right now of, um, of uh, Dave Pistorius, uh, local 518 playing. Uh, and we'll be back in about three or four minutes. Stay tuned. We've got a lot more questions for Kenny. Kenny wants to tell you his story, and I want to hear it too. Thank you.
They, they, I learned a lot from them. We are on the air. We are back with oh Kenny Cohen. Thank good, good video we just saw by Dave <laughs> Pistorius. That was a good video. Good man. Uh -huh. Local 518. Good group. I saw him at um, Matt's Casbah um, Saturday evening. Uh, I went and listened to him for a while. Fantastic. I'm hoping to have Dave on, on the uh, show within the next few, three, four weeks. But we are back with Kenny Cohen. Again, one of the most popular mu musicians in Brevard County and probably beyond Brevard County. Uh, I'm so happy to have him here today. We are going to get back into where we left off. Um, somewhere in the 60s, all your instruments. Yes, you started with the clarinet. Started playing clarinet at an early age, but like probably a lot of other teenagers, you know, you're going, you're listening to rock and roll. There wasn't a whole lot of clarinet going on, but there was a lot of saxophone and a lot of guitar. So, of course, I gravitated towards that because it was cool. <laughs> guitar. I mean, do you play guitar now? Or you? Yeah, I play a little bit of guitar. I don't claim to be a guitar player, but, uh, you know, I mean, I certainly have an affinity for it. You know, I mean, I played with some tremendous guitar players, and I like guitar. And I like to fool around with it. And, you know, on occasion, I've been known to pick a little bit. Mm-hmm. What about, you? What, what about the clarinet? Clarinet, I love clarinet. I, you know, I was, I'm grateful that I had the experience because clarinet's pretty demanding. You know, it's a legit, serious instrument, and yeah, it, it, it grooms you well. You know, most of the successful saxophone players you talk to, they all played clarinet. And so I did it for a little while, and then, of course, I just gravitated towards saxophone. And so you, you stuck with the sax. I, mean, I always, actually, I gotta, I gotta tell you, in the beginning, in nineteen, like in the early sixties, I started playing bass, and I was a bass player and a singer in most of my bands. I had always had saxophone on the, in the background, but in the late, uh, in the late seventies, I went to saxophone. I started playing saxophone a lot more. And then I got in bands with really great bass players. So it was no necessity for me to play bass. Right. And then I then I primarily stayed with saxophone and singing. But your early bands you had in the 60s, uh, were you, what, what instrument were you playing? I was a bass player. In the 60s? Yeah. You started off in the bands as a bass player? I was a bass player in the San Luis. And what was the first band? 
name, the uh, name? Actually, the first band was The Dimensions, but the group that I really started excelling on the bass was a band called The Group, which turned into the Fantastic Group. And uh, These are all Cocoa Beach. This is, this is the Cocoa Beach band. And from that, from that particular band, um, after we played for about four or five years through high school, uh, and the, my bandmates, uh, you know, finishing up school, um, I moved to New York and I joined a band called The Crazy Elephant that had some records out and we toured uh, extensively. And I was the bass player, saxophone player, and the singer in that band. And when the New York episode was over, I came back home to Brevard County and I was feeling a little bit more like I wanted to expand, you know, my uh, right. my performance level. So I in, I developed a band with two really talented players here, Travis Moore and Lawrence Bigelow, and it was called Spring. And we added a young guitar player at the time, was 17, named Mickey Costantini, and a lot of people in this area know who Mickey is. And uh, that was like probably one of the first jazz rock fusion bands around the same time that Miles had d done Bitches Brew and, and, and stuff like that. So I uh, wow. started playing for uh, opening for a lot of big concert acts in Orlando, which was the, the primary venue for all the big touring rock and roll bands to come down and play. And, and we were managed by the company that put all that on. So we were fortunate to be able to open those shows for all those acts. Okay. In, in the 60s, who were you following at the, what kind of music were you following on the on the radio, uh, and what what musician did you did you have one in particular that you really liked? Well, there was several that I really liked, and I still like them today because their music holds up even as we speak. Um, of course, you know, in like 1964, I woke up one day and my friend said, "Look, I just moved from England. Do you know who these guys are? Listen to them." You know, and he handed me the first Beatles album. You know, at the same time, my surf friends were going like, Kenny, you got to check these guys out, man. They're surfers and they play music. They're called the Beach, Beach Boys. Boys. I was like, Excellent. Okay, dude. Turn <laughs> me on, you know. And, and you know, yeah. And, and uh, so here you got the British Invasion, you got the Rolling Stones, you got the Beatles, you got all of the guys. And, you know, uh, we were aspiring to be like these people, right. so we played all their music. The Who came out, you know, uh, yeah. with my generation. You know, it's like, okay. And then, of course, my fave, Jimi Hendrix. And Jimi came out, and my little band, the group, did all this music. We sang that good, and we played that good. All the musicians were very accomplished. We played all the stuff. And at the same time, we were listening to all of the classic jazz stuff. And my little band played some of the Miles compositions, played the Dave Brubeck stuff, and we played all the other rock and roll right. stuff at the same time. And so As a drummer though, I mean I, I followed Krupa and Rich. Did you get did you listen to their style at all? And of the, course I did. As a matter of fact, well and, and as a, at the, by the same token I'm sure that you're you know uh, you know you know from Joe Morello. Oh yeah. Okay? And that was the school and awesome. incidentally, not to patronize you or anything, but drummers were always my favorite players. And I heard all the music and the drums, and of course, those first jazz guys that I listened to, like Krupa, Buddy Rich, Joe Morello, uh, you know, Art Blakey, uh, then when I got turned on to Elvin Jones, you know, and, you know, uh, my life just got better and better and better musically, and I was, you know, I always hung out with my drummers, and... <laughs> Because we were always wanting to know the latest grooves, the latest beats, you know. We'd take care of the of the harmonic content, and we could sing it all. And most of my drummers were good singers too. That's so good. <laughs> I was really happy. <laughs> yeah, there's drummers back then. Singing drummers were a little bit hard to find. Well, I know you'll remember this. You know, uh, you know, it's like what the first show that we ever did with the Young Rascals, and I saw Dino Dinelli playing oh, drums. I Dino. was like, you know, oh this goodness. guy. And and a lot of the big drummers today still talk about him. I still have some his drumsticks. I mean, I mean he was fantastic. Th yeah, these are the guys that were like you know these were the <laughs> guys that really came out. You know, Dino Dinelli. Yeah, man, love those I'm guys. Trying, yeah, he was he was incredible. Twirling sticks and, and like just dancing on his drums. You know, it's like you know how, how could you not love it? Good songs too. Great songs. You know, I'm thinking of um, Grand Funk Railroad. Danny Brewer. Danny Brewer. The drummer. God, what, 
Yeah, these guys made some hard grooves, <laughs> didn't they? Yeah, because I, I used to follow them too back. I used to love that. They're still around, believe it or not. Yep. So, so you were listening to going from kind of a jazz to, to rock. I mean, you were kind of listening to both sides. Exactly. Yeah, and, 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 and the good news for me was that my bandmates also loved all of the different styles of music. And I, I know that today, because I like it all. I mean, even today, you know, I have people that ask me, you know, it's like, you don't really like rap music, do you? <laughs> I'm going like, you know, you guys, I got to tell you, I don't mind it at all. Actually, I like it a lot because the grooves and stuff that are playing is the same stuff I grew up on. Yeah. You know, they've sampled James Brown probably and, and a couple of the other ones oh. as much, if not more, than anybody else. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, oh, you can hear it in, in some of the beats. And yeah, the, I mean, I might not understand all the nuances of what, you know, half the time I don't even know what they're really saying, but I like the rhythmic content of it, you know. I like what they do, so. Do you remember, wasn't Dave Clark the drummer, too? Dave Clark was the drummer. He was the leader of that band, yeah. That's what I thought. And it was a couple of drummers. Even the Rare Earth drummer was the lead singer. Yeah. If you remember yeah. Rare Earth, yeah, too, I, I know course, you do. Yeah. Um, now, as we turn into the 70s, Things changed a little bit. You know, Glitter Rock came in in the 70s, uh, Bowie and uh, Lou Reed. Yeah, right. Things started moving a little bit in a different direction. Do you yeah. remember what you were doing around uh, the, around then? Actually, I, I, I alluded to it earlier. Um, I started a band at that particular time. I was coming out of New York, and I came back to Florida. So when I was up in New York, I saw, besides all the bands, the, that, the groups that, that played at the Fillmore and did stuff on that level... Uh, all the big, big international touring bands, there was still like the New York scene. And those guys were always very innovative and always coming up with great stuff. So when I came back to Florida, I was interested in my own self developing something that would be a, a little bit different. And that's when I started that band that I mentioned before called Spring, because we were doing like kind of an avant-garde jazz rock. Uh, a jazz rock type. Kind of, yeah, kind of situation. And uh, I did that for several years and and then in the early 70s, uh, we were fortunate to put together a, a, a super, like, all-star band with some really wonderful players. Three of my former, two of my other former bandmates and myself from the band The Group, and a, a fellow that was uh, out of Gainesville, actually lived in, near Winter Haven, named uh, Donnie Dump Truck Hanna, and we formed a band called New Days Ahead, and... To this day, in Brevard County, people still talk about this band, and uh, a lot of some of my best music friends that I grew up with in this town uh, supported and were fans of this particular group. We were very innovative and really way ahead of our time from what we did. Wow. Were you playing bass or...? I was playing bass and saxophones at the time, as my good friend Paul Hill calls it, you were doing your Roland Kirk thing. <laughs> so as you went into the 70s, you were playing bass and sax. Yeah, yeah. And eventually it would go more toward the sax. Yes, exactly. Toward, okay. Um, oh, well, we got 15 seconds. I can ask one more quick. How about, how about your family life? Were you, were you starting a family during all this, or you, you were still not doing that? You were in the, in the music. Well, to be quite candid with you, I was always starting a family life. Okay. So, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I've always been, you know, I've always been close to the people that uh, that I've been blessed that have loved me through everything, and I've loved them back. So, we're, you know, s still hopefully that so will we be the were way things to go. Yeah, yeah, because as a musician, I was always doing a family thing somewhere in through the decades. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, we'll be right back. We're going to take another uh, three-minute break and watch a video of the studio that uh, the owner, the crazy owner, Will, uh, uh, did this morning real quick, uh, just to get you a couple views of the studio from the inside. Not the whole place, because I don't have 30, 40 minutes. Okay, we'll be right back. More with Kenny Coney. He's going to hopefully play a, a tune for us on the sax. All right, thank you.
when she tell me that you love me? And we're back on the air for some music from our guest today, Kenny Cohen. This is the tune he wants to do for us. Let's all enjoy it because this guy's a master of the saxophone. He's a great musician. Here's Kenny. <laughs> Thank 
of nice tunes by our guest today, Kenny Cohen. Can he play that sax? I'll tell you, I love it. You ought to hear him sing, too. I heard him singing the last time they were recording here at the studio. Um, I didn't expect to hear him sing, but he sang, and I'm going, oh, listen to that. You've got, you got a kind of really cool voice. Thanks, so. Because I heard, I heard the way he kind of rumble it out, you know, like, <laughs> I love that. Thanks. All right, we're going to go back to finish up the 70s here because we still got some uh, space to cover on time. Uh, during the 70s, were you writing your own music yet, or, or were you... In the band New Days Ahead, we were writing our own music. That was the whole premise of the band, this was to be like an original recording uh, artist band. We did a couple of covers, but we did them in our, you know, our own kind of... Uh, you know, artistic way. Uh, all the musicians in the band were all talented players and singers and writers. And we had a very versatile group. Okay. Any record labels? Any c contracts? Uh, as a matter of fact, at that particular time, there was uh, you know, a couple of opportunities for us in, in New York. Uh, uh, one with, with like Electra Records and then one with Capricorn Records, the guys that did all the stuff out of Macon. And uh, there was a couple of independent labels at the time, but you know, uh, really nothing really developed for us in that capacity. So. And in that area, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Now... Were you still playing clubs in uh, Cocoa Beach, or did you go up to New York, or did you travel anywhere up the coast? Uh, I, as a matter of fact, yeah, I did. I did travel. I mean, uh, back in my earlier days, I had spent time uh, in New Orleans, so frequently I'd return and go back to New Orleans and play some of the venues in, in New Orleans, and you know, mostly around the, uh, you know, the Bourbon Street area. And then there's a couple of, of clubs a little bit on the outskirts, and and I got an opportunity to play with some of the touring bands and. Uh, uh, I went out to California and played out in California as, as well, and I was in Virginia Beach for a while, and I was in Atlanta Virginia for a while, Beach. and back to New York for a while. And then I actually uh, found myself oh. in Southwest Florida, and I was doing, uh, I was playing actually, we were based out of Fort Myers, but I was playing a lot on Sanibel and Captiva. Wow. 
Awesome. And and I had some nice. really great musicians and some you know some really interesting people that came in that area and and like the other musicians in the southeast you know we played considerably a, a lot in you know like in Key West in Miami Fort Lauderdale West Palm Beach you know Tampa Gainesville Jacksonville Daytona uh, Tallahassee you know and because Florida Florida you know, yeah Florida's got a lot of great players and a lot of great venues and a lot of guys from up north come down here and. It's you know it's it's quite a mix. I'm I'm very grateful to be from uh, from you know sp this specific area, but Florida in general. In general, it's just I met just some of the greatest. people. In the whole country, it's a good spot. I, I personally think so. I mean, you know, the music industry is centered around only a couple places in the states. You know, you know, New York, L.A. You know, and then there's the places in between. Mm -hmm. But you know, Florida, I think Nashville. holds. I think yeah. Well, of course, Nashville. I've had an opportunity to. Hang in Nashville. A lot of my friends still play in the Nashville area, and it, it's always going to be a major force in the world. I mean, uh, from what I've observed, the uh, the whole world has looked towards the United States to run, you know, the music industry, and and the European countries. You know, they've come out with their own brand of stuff. I mean, you know, heavy metal is huge. You know, uh, our country music is huge. Our rock and roll is huge. Our rhythm and blues is huge. Our jazz thing is is a phenomenon that is like taking over the whole world. Right. So, you know, and this is what this is the legacy that we have, you know, to, available to us for our whole lives, forever. And for the young kids coming up, I mean, it's the little sidebar from Kenny Cohen. It's like I couldn't <laughs> be more happier for the young people of our world that play the way they do. Mm -hmm. It's just it's, it's astounding. It is. It really it gives me a lot of hope gives me a lot of encouragement and enthusiasm just to hear them play and see what they do. And, ironically enough, they claim it's all because of us. You know, and I, I, I'm thinking, like, you guys, whatever you got going on and however you got there, I'm amazed. Mm -hmm. You know, show well, me. Well, yeah, they've, and, and they've watched enough of the, of the good musicians like yourself. Yeah, they pick so up pretty, I mean, I have a 16-year-old group that comes in here it's funny because we're sitting in the kitchen and they're in here recording and we're saying, you know, they sound like they're 50 years old. They're playing, they're playing 60s music and they're 16. Exactly. You know, big heavy bottom bass and the and guitar. And the, I, I mean, we were like, anyways, dazed rage. Young kids on satellite high. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I love seeing that, you know. <laughs> now, did you skip through the, the, the uh, disco time in there or, or did you cut Well. Like, you know, I was fortunate because um, since the since my beginnings in the music, when I was primarily you know coming up, and we were doing a lot of cover music and stuff for our time, which was in the '60s, I was fortunate that I was always able to formulate a group or be involved in an ensemble that really didn't patronize the commercial top forty era. Even though during that those particular times, I always crossed paths with most of those bands that were playing in the pop field, you know, in the 70s and the 80s, like you said, the disco stuff or the the pop music, as it were. Right. And I always used to just take that and implement it in the music that I was doing because it was the music of the time, right. you know. And that's what the the most you know the most visible music and the most popular music. So I always wanted to have elements of that in my music, but that wasn't something that I aspired to do. I've, you know, I knew that these guys were going to do it much better, you know, than say that I possibly would. And the pop groups of the time, I mean, I saw many, many road bands that were as, doing the cover stuff as good as the bands that made the music, you know. Right. And and that time, I mean, you being a drummer, uh, you know that like during the um, disco time and all that was like all about percussion, KC and the Sunshine it Band. It was. I mean, it was all, you know, Gloria. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean that's later, but... You know, back in the back in those times, you know, I mean, not to uh, to leave out guys like you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and, oh. and and you know, and Tower of Power, and you know, and Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Tears. and in Chicago, and I mean, you know, good bands. We had, yeah, we love these guys. I used to do some of their cover stuff and do it in my own way in my little ensembles, just because the music was so good. Yeah, you know, David Clayton. Thomas. Oh my God! Yeah, incredibly great singer. So we we get into the '80s, things changed again. Uh, you know, I remember things. We got kind of weird in the '80s, uh, it, music wise. I got out in, at '85 and took a break from playing drums for many years with groups. 
But I noticed the music had cha was changing at that time. Madonna, I mean, it was starting to, to get in. A lot of females. Yeah. What were you What were you uh, doing around that time? Well, when uh, I when I left the West Coast area, I came back to this area, and once again, I wanted to stay true to, you know, what I had evolved, what I was evolving through, and I once again wound up back here in Satellite Beach. I wound up finding the most uh, creative musicians around, and we just went ahead and started being ourselves again over here in Brevard County, and Brevard County was blowing up. You know, we're we're supposed to be taking a break in, in thirty six. We're we're gonna we're gonna cut the the last three minute video down, and I'm gonna spend more time a little bit with Kenny, and uh, we're gonna we we'll do a little bit of change up today because I, I I need to hear his his story. Um, so we're That'd still be fantastic. Thank you. Uh, so, what, where were you in eighty nine? Were you here back in Cocoa Beach? In eighty nine, I came back here in eighty six, and in uh, eighty nine once again. I was fortunate to, to, to be a part of a collective group of individuals that uh, assembled some from here, some that came from elsewhere, some of my former colleagues, and we started, at that particular time, there were several incredible bands performing in this area. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, there was... There was a band called the Spliff Brothers uh, with the Van Riper boys that were in it, and Mike Lazier and and Kurt Austin and a kid named David Black, and and and, and they they had cornered this certain little market and they were blowing it up. And then there was a, a great blues band with horn players called uh, the Mills Brothers Blues Band with Bobby and Johnny Mills, and uh, wow. and and then of course one of my all-time faves. Dave Feaster and Austin Pettit, and they were, they had a band called the Groove Monsters. Groove Monsters, and they were blowing it up like nobody's business. Good. And I came back, and I had, I had they all of those bands respectively had their own like thing going on here in Brevard County, and I had this carved out over this little niche over here it was more <laughs> like a fusion jazz R and B rock, doing a little bit more of the obscure obscure music, playing in the same uh, popular venues, and mm -hmm. we all kind of just shared that arena, you know, and it was just a, an incredibly great time because we were all so inspired by one another. Everybody was like, it was always about like, well, man, did you hear what they were doing? Or did you catch this? Or check him out, man. And, you know, and of course it, you know, it made us all want to be just like, okay, well then, okay. What well, a great well, array of music that the, the, the locals oh could hear. The, oh my God, it was just, it was phenomenal. You know, I hope I didn't leave anybody out because there was, they had it covered on every area. I mean, one day you're listening to some intense reggae band, and then you're listening to a like some jazz quartet that are they're playing like you know all the Boston, Berkeley, New York music, and then you're listening to some blues band that you think they're just right out of <laughs> Austin, Texas, and then you're listening to Dave Feaster in Austin, just you know, incredible. Some of the best musicians yeah, I still to this day think that they're some of the best music and musicians. Comparatively speaking, with anybody that I'd ever heard anywhere, and it was all right, right here, here within five minutes of your house. That's incredible. incredible. Wow! So you're going, you're moving into the '90s, and then I don't know if you remember Dockside. You remember Gatsby's? Very well. Because I, I worked for the Gatsby's. Mate... You know <laughs> I was with the Makepeace family. Well, there you go. I don't know if you remember the Makepeace, but. Of I ran, course, I remember them very well. <laughs> I, I ran Dockside. <laughs> I was the manager of Dockside with Dana Make Peace. So I, we did the club across the street, which was a sports emporium. You ask about you <laughs> ask about it, 1989. Yeah. I wound up going down to Key West when they bought that they place. Did, down I know there. it. I, uh, <laughs> I so I going, wound up going down there. I, I did too. I went down for two weeks. Uh, but y y we had good music coming out of the sports emporium and the Dockside. You guys had, you know, as a matter of fact, I think. Uh, at that particular time, I even, I think, at that particular time, I even ran into Anna Delgado and her band oh, one of the, the first oh, times playing, playing for you guys across yeah. the street. Oh, yeah. And then all of the great <laughs> bands that you had playing at uh, at Dockside. I mean, I really? think that was the first time I ever met Eddie Scott. Solar Eclipse. And so, oh, Donnie and... Oh, yeah, I mean, we had oh. some good bands there. On Sunday, they'd be jamming there. Well, see, this was the a primary, riverboat was there too. This was a primary venue. This is this is what actually led, I believe, which led to the port developing and becoming who they are because they just took your format. Right. You guys were on the water. Right there. It's still on the water. It's still, still there, there, and it's still a, a primary venue here because 
right. of what was created there. Just like what's created on the beach really hasn't gone anywhere. No, it hasn't. I mean, I played with, I played last night. God love these guys. I played with the Bone Dogs last night at Winfields. You know, probably one of my favorite bands in this town. Mm -hmm. Tremendous band. And that is the same corner that I grew up on. Okay, I grew up at Sea Park. Here is the Rocket Lounge. It's now called Winfields. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys are still playing there. These kids grew up in this town. Now they play there. Now it's still a primarily killer venue. And all the musicians that are in the area of any notoriety all go there on Wednesday to hang with these boys. Well, the well, the Bone Dogs are for the best guys you can find around. You know I, I mean, mean, I'm honest when I say that. No. For I, the best, nicest guys you can. And talented and good. And their CD is out, too, so we need to, we need to uh, I'll put a plug in for your CD next week. I tell you what, man. It's, I enjoy playing with those guys so much. They, they really are inspiring. And, and they <laughs> never... Guys. They never cease to surprise me. Anyway, yep. that's my bo that's my bone dog. I love you guys. <laughs> we we like them. We love them too. Great guys. So now now nineties uh, to me uh, was uh, kind of lost a little bit in the nineties. Me I mean me musically. I don't know uh, uh, how about you in the nineties. Once again, uh, I evolved from uh, you know doing just the local gigs around and 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 and, and, and my, the other people I mentioned they were still holding strong doing what they were doing. I fortunately got a, a, a gig, a house gig, across the river at Dr. Joe's Intercoastal, and I had assembled quite a cast of characters for this operation. I swapped them out a few times, but for over six years, we played upstairs, and Conky Joe's was catty corner across the street, and so we would start at 9.30, and we would play till 11 o'clock, Take a break till 11.30, Conky Joe's would let out. We'd have a whole new uh, switch of audience, and it was absolutely phenomenal. And we, a lot of great players came and sat in with us, um, and we played a really high level of music. A lot of fun stuff, a lot of party music, but always our own stuff. Did a lot of New Orleans-type stuff, did a lot of jazz stuff. Um, you know, I had, I had such... As a matter of fact, uh, when the Groove Monsters disbanded... Uh, that's when Austin started playing with me. And uh, once we brought Austin in, you know, uh, everybody loved Austin. And oh, so, gosh. and I had some other guys in the band that were all from other real popular bands around town. And, and uh, the things just well, you, just took off. And we did yeah, that until 2000. You're incredible. I mean, you know, you and Austin, there's two incredible musicians. Well, you know. I mean, I, I'm going to be honest with you, and I'll say it on the, I get goosebumps. Um, I really do. I went went to the benefit there for Austin. I mean, I, my eyes watered up. I got goosebumps. You guys are so good when you were all up there playing. I can with Kenny Clark and, and Paul Hill and Ross and Michael. I mean, it was like, what the heck? This is this is incredible right here. Well, I tell you what. Uh, uh, just a, just a quick note again. Last night was no exception. Last night was the precursor for what's about to happen on Saturday at the Space Coast Music Festival. Oh, yeah, Our good friend event. Sulu Lai is putting on a tremendous event, Amen. as she always does with everything. She put all the benefits on for us. And, uh, tell, tell them, where is that now? This, this, that's at Manatee Park on, on, uh, in Cape Canaveral. It's Cape Canaveral's 50th anniversary in conjunction with Sulu Lai's event, where she actually put up, puts this event on to supplement the uh, school music and art programs, and uh, and all the proceeds go directly to that. Wow, it's a wonderful great. effort. All of us participate in this because this is what we believe in, and this is where it comes from. And all of us are all getting together. The Rocket Ranch Band, which uh, we put together here at your studio a couple of months ago. Paul flew in from California. He also has his partner from Truly Blessed here. The Bone Dogs. Uh, you know, Incredible. Mike. Mike plays with us. Austin plays with us, Kenny Clark plays with us, Paul Hill plays with us in Rocket Ranch, then Russ and the boys and Mark and Derek and Mike have the Bone Dogs, and we're all performing at this, plus a headliner group from the islands called High Tide, yeah. along with all of Brevard County's best musicians will be there for this event. And that's what we're all uh, really trying to keep the Can't spirit... Miss this, we, well, we're trying to keep the spirit of that alive in Brevard County, because in my estimation and opinion... This is really what it's always been about. And it's not just in our own little community. It's everywhere in the world that I've noticed that it's like that. Everybody's got their like little music scene, their little art scene. And 
for me, I look at it and it's what really is the the glue that keeps all that together, all together. You know, and it keeps us all tight. It keeps us all in the know. You know, it gives us all an opportunity to you know for self expression to follow our passion, and you know, and it probably. I, I wouldn't say probably. I most definitely believe that it's inspired, you know, the, all the generations to come. So, Amen. Yeah. Now, everybody's got to go check everybody out on, on this weekend up in Cape Canaveral. All the good musicians will be, well, all kinds of musicians will be there. Are all good. You can hear Kenny up there. You can hear all the, uh, all the other bands. Uh, yeah. Rocket Ranch, huh? Yep. Man, you kind of caught me on that one. I remember, I didn't quite catch the name at first when you told me that. Yeah. But then I figured it out. And the Bone Dogs, they're going to all be there this weekend up in Cape Canaveral. You all need to attend that. I want to thank Kenny Thanks. for being here today. This was an honor for me to be able to interview such a nice guy and a great musician as Kenny. Thank you, Kenny, for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Check this out now this weekend. See Kenny. We'll be back next Thursday, 2 o'clock. I'll tell you who the guest is. I'd like to keep it a little suspenseful. Thank you. God bless. Thank you for tuning in. Tell your friends, go Saturday, Sunday, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, Saturday. Go Saturday. See everybody up in Canaveral. We'll see you now. Take it away. It's bringing me at the dark Finally I can see you crystal clear Go ahead and sail me out And I'll lay your ship bare See how I leave With every piece of you Don't underestimate The things that I will do There's a fire Starting in my heart Reaching a fever pitch And it's bringing me at the dark the scars of your love remind me of us They keep me thinking that we almost had it all The scars of your love, they leave me breathless I can't help feeling we could have had it all Rolling in the deep You had my heart inside your hand Burn. See how I leave with every piece of you. Don't underestimate.